Hello friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Grab your Bible if you want to follow along. We're going to be reading out of the book of Joel. We have one chapter in Joel left. It is a minor prophet in the Old Testament that comes after the book of Hosea. Um, as when I say minor prophet, it doesn't mean that it's not an important piece of text. It just means it is a smaller of the prophets in the Old Testament because Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah are the longest. Sometimes Daniel is included as well. Those are the major prophets and the minor prophets are just smaller texts. It's a little bit more difficult to find. After the major prophets, after Hosea, the book of Joel, we are in chapter three. It is a total blessing to have you here with me. Um, we're getting to the end of the year here, 2023, if you're watching this in a lifetime. And I just, I sincerely pray that God is blessing you abundantly. And then if you decide to make a New Year's resolution to draw closer to the Lord, that you decide to start that resolution today. And that we can encourage one another, love one another, and point one another to the cross and the beautiful work of the Holy Spirit. Chapter three, judgment against enemy nations. At the time of those events, says the Lord, when I restore the prosperity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather the armies of the world into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Then I will judge them for harming my people, my special possession, for scattering my people among the nations, and for dividing up my land. They threw dice to decide which of my people would be their slaves. They traded boys to obtain prostitutes and sold girls for enough wine to get drunk. What do you have against me, Tyre and Sidon, and you cities of Philistia? Are you trying to take revenge on me? If you are, then watch out. I will strike swiftly and pay you back for everything you have done. You have taken my silver and gold, all my precious treasures, and have carried them off to your pagan temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, so they could take them far from their homeland. But I will bring them back from all the places to which you sold them, and I will pay you back for everything you have done. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the people of Arabia, a nation far away. I, the Lord, have spoken. Say to the nations far and wide, get ready for war. Call out your best warriors. Let all your fighting men advance for the attack. Hammer your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Train, every, train even your weaklings to be warriors. Come quickly, all you nations everywhere, gather together in the valley. And now, O oh Lord, call out your warriors. Let the nations be called to arms. Let them march to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I, the Lord, will sit to pronounce judgment on them all. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come tread the grapes, for the wine press is full. The storage vats are overflowing with the wickedness of these people. It's really, really heartbreaking. Thousands upon thousands are waiting in the valley of decision. There the day of the Lord will soon arrive. The sun and moon will grow dark and the stars will no longer shine. The Lord's voice will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people. Amen. A strong fortress for the people of Israel. Verse 17, blessings for God's people. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, live in Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem will be holy forever, and foreign armies will never conquer her again. In that day, the mountains will drip with sweet wine, and the hills will flow with milk. Water will fill the stream beds of Judah, and a fountain will burst forth from the Lord's temple, watering the arid valley of Acacias. But Egypt will become a wasteland, and Edom will become a wilderness, because they attacked the people of Judah and killed innocent people in their land. But Judah will be filled with people forever, and Jerusalem will endure through all generations. Verse 21, I will pardon my people's crimes, which I have not yet pardoned. And I, the Lord, will make my home in Jerusalem with my people. That is the end of the book of Joel. And um, interestingly enough, we spoke about judgment in church this morning. I do want to be very cautious about my commentary. So the book of Joel is over and this is just my two cents. I am zero person of authority. I'm just a girl reading the Bible on her couch. My brain is going everywhere as I read this. And in the news right now, there's so much talk about Israel. Is Israel God's chosen people? There's a lot of different opinions on the matter. But when I read this, it does come across to me like this is a special people for God. And it is a remnant because if we remember in the earlier chapters of the Old Testament, it wasn't all of Abraham's children that were the chosen ones. It was the remnant, um, the special possession of the Lord. But when we read this text here, what the Bible specifically says about Jerusalem, about his chosen people, that God does have people that are his 
special possession. And God does desire repentance. He, God does desire for us to walk in obedience because we love him and care about him, not because we want extra Girl Scout badges to wear around town and to boast in ourselves, but to boast in the Holy Spirit that works on our behalf when we put our faith and trust in God. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we are told over and over and over again to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in church today, when we were talking about judgment, the pastor was talking about how so many people see all the evil going on in the world and don't understand why God's not doing anything. But God is not slow as we count slowness, but he is gracious and merciful and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love and mercy and grace to those who love him and call upon the Lord God. To send a person into hell is a decision I would never want to make. And I never want to be the person that is so eager for someone to face the judgment that they deserve because I understand the judgment that I deserve and that I too am a wicked, horrible sinner. And when I think about the cross as I develop in my walk with the Lord, it becomes harder and harder and harder to think about, even though it's never been easy. It's never been easy to understand. But as we mature in our faith and we realize what has been paid and why it was paid, there's so much gratitude that fills my heart because I don't want to deal with the wrath and judgment of God, but he is holy and he is righteous. And in his holiness, God has to hate evil. He has to hate sin and wickedness. So even though we are not perfect in ourselves and in our flesh, when we decide to walk by faith in the Holy Spirit, God does work in us, but we have to continue to focus on the Lord and to desire to repent, to serve the Lord. Um, again, I am no position of authority. I wish there was a better way for me to say that. I'm a fairly new Christian and there's so much still to learn, but as I stumble and fall and make mistake after mistake, I am comforted by knowing that it's not about my goodness, my greatness, how wonderful I am, and that many of the disciples stumbled many times as well. But get up, dust off, focus on the Lord, dedicate your heart to him as best as you can, and yes, there is a day coming where there is judgment. So it is good that God is steadfast and gracious and merciful and loving, and I hope that we all continue to walk by faith and to encourage one another in love. Life is not easy, but God is good all the time. So if you're going through something difficult, just know that God is with you, even if it doesn't feel like he is. I promise you he is. I promise you. And if I can pray for you anyway, let me know. Um, sorry again for my rambles, but it's just hard not to sometimes because the word is alive and it is amazing to get to have this opportunity to read the Bible. Not everyone has it. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you very soon. God bless. Bye-bye.